Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be looking at a distribution that I've been wanting to check out for a long time, and that is Ubuntu DDE. This is Ubuntu running with the Deepin desktop environment. And if you don't know what Deepin is, it's a Linux distribution that comes out of China. They have their own kind of curated app store and everything. And a lot of people have concerns with running it, security concerns, because it's coming from China. They have their own app store. Um, so what this team did was they took that Deepin desktop environment, which is a beautiful desktop environment, put it on a stable Ubuntu core, stripped out the, uh, the app, Chinese app store, and it just uses the Ubuntu app store. Um, it's a solid distribution with a beautiful desktop, and we're gonna take a look at it today, and I'll give my opinion, some things I like and th some things I don't like as we go through the tour. All right, so here we are at the Deepin login after the installation. I skipped through the installation because it is just an Ubuntu installer. You've probably seen it before. If not, it's very self-explanatory. So I just skipped through the whole thing and let's log in for the first time here. So here we are on the Deepin desktop. And as you can see, it is a good looking desktop. Um, we have a dock kind of thing down at the bottom. We have some applications I'll get to in a minute and some settings over here on the right hand side. So just looking at this dock going from left to right, we have a menu and we have two settings for the menu. One is this kind of Windows-esque application list. We just have all of the applications listed here. We can click on all categories and get to categories for those installed applications. I'll go through those later. Or we can jump out to like our computer or documents folder, or pictures folder, music folder, or movies, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's very similar to other desktop environments or like a Windows installation. Now, if we click this, we go into a uh, application list. And this is very similar to what's in Mac OS um, over the past several versions. We can just scroll through our pages here and you know launch on any of these this is really nice for a you know touch screen if you're using it and you want to use it in kind of a tablet form like if you're installing it on a surface pro or something like that then you can uh, use this um, application launcher if you don't want to look through just all your apps you can click on here and it categorizes them for you into you know music movies graphics games you know all these different categories so you can quickly get into one of those and then find the application you want. And then within all these kind of groupings, you can scroll through these different pages. The pages are indicated at the bottom. So for right now, we'll just keep this, you know, regular application list. The next thing on this bar is our show desktop button. So if we have an application open, we can quickly show the desktop. That's nothing special. And this is our multitasking view. It'll show us all the applications we have open, but this is also the way that we get into our workspaces. So there's two by default, and then we can just hit this plus to add more. And then if we go back to one and hit the super or windows key and then right arrow, we can go through those and it loops back around or we can go left and kind of loop through that way as well. Now in the center here, we have um, kind of like a dock uh, set of applications. These are favorited applications. We can add additional things to this dock. Uh, say we want the image viewer on there. We can just open that up and then hit dock and it sticks it in there for us. So now it's in there permanently or and then we can just drag it out if we want. Obviously it's still in the menu here, but it's just not on the dock anymore. Uh, so that's very kind of Mac OS like, but it's all integrated onto this panel. And then we have some uh, system settings for, you know, our sound and internet connections. Um, we can actually hide those to utilize our space a little more. Uh, we have this on-screen keyboard. Again, if you're going to be using this as kind of a, uh, a touch screen device, there's an on-screen keyboard for you here and you can change the size of that however you see fit. The, uh, time and date and then we have our power button that has all our options for logging out shutting down you know all that good stuff and trash can now 
Next thing I want to say about this doc, there's two modes for this. What you're seeing right now is called the fashion mode. So this is similar to, uh, you know, it, it, it uses the concept of, of a dock on Mac OS, but it adds some more functionality. If we go into efficient mode, this is more of a Windows type of taskbar where we have, you know, the, the same icons are here, but it's just laid out differently. You know, we have our favorited icons over on the left and they just get added to the right as we go. So, you know, it, it's all a matter of preference. Functionality wise, it's exactly the same. It just depends on what you like. I kind of like this fashion mode. One thing that's kind of interesting about Deepin, and it's a total ripoff for Mac OS, is the way they handle theming. Now, there's not a whole lot of theming options. There's basically a light, dark, and automatic mode. So let me show you that real quickly. If we go into this control center, this brings us into a kind of categorized view. So we can go into these different categories and get to the settings. So if we go into display, it shows us all the settings about our display. Now you'll notice these categories and the items in this list are the same. So once you go into this category, you can get to one of those er other areas. You don't have to go back and select in there. You can just jump right into it. Like if we want to go to personalization. So in here we have our themes, we have light auto and auto changes with the time of day, either light or dark or we just have our dark. We can change our accent color. Right now it's this blue color. We could make it red or green, you know, whatever we want to do there. And then we can mess with our transparency. You can see the dock down at the bottom. Um, it's getting more and less transparent. We have some effects for when we're mi minimizing things. Again, total Mac OS ripoff. So right now it's scale. You can see it kind of scales down as we minimize. And we can also do a magic lamp where, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> um, also in here in this personalization area, we can change our icon themes and you can add more icons here. You can also add more uh, cursors and it's just a matter of selecting, you know, one of these themes. If we want to switch to papyrus, we just select papyrus or papyrus dark, you know, whatever we want. And then we can do the same with the cursors and fonts. And there is a, there are a ton of fonts that are included with this distribution. Now I'm not going to go through every setting, but obviously these different areas have, you know, settings related to their topic. So default applications, all our network settings are all categorized under here. Notifications, we can set notifications for our different applications, our sound settings, Bluetooth, our date and time. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out about the date and time, it defaults to 24 hour and you can switch it to 12 hour. Now, if you notice down at the bottom here in this clock, uh, when you hover over it, it says Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. Um, underneath it, the short date is 2021 slash one slash 19. Now for most of the world, that's fine. But for us in the US, you know, we usually Flip that around and have month, day, year. And uh, the interesting thing is that with the other formats, like the long date, you can set it up that way. It's no problem. But the short date is always year, month, day. Uh, there may be a way to change that in a config file or something. And honestly, it's not that big of a deal, but I just wanted to point it out. We also have our, you know, power settings, settings for mouse, all the settings that you would typically expect. We can get into our shortcuts and see what the default shortcuts are and change all these. And then we can get our system info that gives us information about the system we're running it on and the version of Ubuntu DDE that we have. So the settings, all the settings that you would need for most of the things you want to do with your system are in there. And it's in a really nice uniform setting, all centralized in one area. I really, really like that. So before I go any further, I'm just going to switch our theme back just so when we're going through this, you will know what it looks like, um, you know, by default. So I think the original theme is this bloom dark. So we're going to select that. So I want to get into talking about some of the applications, but there's two that I want to kind of point out before we get into the others. The first one is the file manager. Now in Deepin, there are a bunch of applications that are written by the Deepin team and they look just like, they look like they fit. Everything has the same 
design aesthetics. So everything fits very nicely with it, with each other. And one of those things is the file manager. It keeps the theming and the file manager is very, very nice. Uh, they've made some interesting choices here, but there's one thing that for my workflow is kind of a deal breaker. And I'll show you that in just a second. But just going in here, you know, we have our typical home desktop video, music, pictures, all that stuff we can get to. Those are the same links that are in the menu here. And they're also, if you click on computer, the same links that are here. Now also under computer, this, they took a little design cue from Windows here in that it shows all the drives that you have mapped to the system. So right now we have, this is our, our main hard drive and we have a USB drive inserted and it all shows up in here. Now let's connect out to a network drive, which is easy enough is just typing. See, I've uh, tested a couple here already. So we're gonna connect to here and then go back to computer and we can see that that network drive is there. It shows us how much space is used, how much is available and the type of drive that it is. So it's actually really, really nice to just click on computer and see at a glance all the storage devices that are connected to your computer. Now, you might have noticed when I went into the network drive, it didn't prompt me for a username and password. That's because I have been to those drives before. If you haven't been, it'll pop up and ask you to type in your credentials when connecting to a network drive. Now, the reason I connected to this drive specifically is I have some pictures out here, which leads me to the issue that I have with this file manager here. If we just go out here into this folder, I have some pictures here, some PNGs, and they're not displaying a preview. There's nothing in the settings that'll let you show a preview for remote files. There is a preview section, but this is all for local stuff. Anything on your, your, your local drives or a directly attached storage is gonna show a preview just fine. That works fine, but there's no previews for remote files. For my workflow, that's kind of a big deal. But the nice thing is this is Linux, so it's not a deal breaker for this distribution because you can just replace this file manager with something like Nautilus that does show those remote previews. So it's not that big a deal, but something I wanted to point out that is an issue with the default file manager here. And then you, of course you can change your views just like, you know, most other file managers. So it's actually, uh, you know, pretty nice. There's some limitations and it's pretty basic, which, you know, is not necessarily a bad thing. So the next application I want to call out specifically is the terminal. And it's a very functional, very good terminal, a little bit limited, but it does have some decent capabilities. One of those is we can do additional workspaces or tabs. So if we just hit the plus there, it creates a new one. We can do control shift T to create one as well. So we just come to this one and, you know, we do an LS and then we can come over here and do some other work and come over to this one, and do some other work and then just switch between those all within the same window. There's no tiling, but you can do control alt T to open up a new window. And then you can, you know, put that one over there, put this one on the right and do them side by side. So coming into the settings, there's one thing that's nice in here and that's this remote management. You can come in here, add a server, and easily create a connection to an SSH server. Coming into the settings, there's not a whole lot in here, but there's some stuff. We can change the opacity of the, of the window there. We can change our font, font size, cursor, scroll, and window. There's not a whole lot of options for those, but can tweak that a little bit. And then we can see all the shortcuts that are specific to the terminal and change those if we so desire. So those are the only two applications that I wanted to call out and show specific functionality in, but now I'm gonna go through some of the other applications that are included with this distribution and try to point out the ones that are created by the Deepin team and those that are not. So these are the default applications. I haven't installed anything extra. So if we come into here, I'll just switch to the categories. Under internet, we have Thunderbird Mail and Firefox web browser, music, is the music app that is a deepen app video movie and screen capture are both deepen apps and then cheese is a webcam app that's not uh written by the deepen team coming into the graphics image viewer looks like album is the only one that's a deepen app in here image viewer document scanner gimp image editor that comes installed by default and libreoffice draw 
This comes with the LibreOffice Suite pre-installed in it. Games, our typical Ubuntu fair, we have 2048, Chess, Mahjong, and Sudoku. Coming into the Office apps, we have Document Viewer and Text Editor. Those are both deep in applications. And then we have the LibreOffice Suite that is not written by the Deepin team, obviously. And then System, we have the File Manager, Terminal, and then all our settings related to our system that are in here. Obviously, some of these are the Ubuntu stuff, like the Software and Update, Software Updater, and Software Application. And then we have settings for our printer, that onboard is the on-screen keyboard. Most of the settings that we also had in here are available in that category. One more app that I wanted to specifically call out and just talk a little bit about is the calendar. And it's actually a decent calendar. I mean, it looks really nice. It's decent functionality, but a major limitation is that it cannot connect to any online services your Google Calendar, CalDAV, any of that stuff. It's all completely local. So if you're security conscious and you like just having your calendar entries on your local machine, that's awesome. It'll probably work really well for you. For the rest of us that sync our calendars with multiple devices, uh, it's a little bit challenging with this. But, you know, you do have Thunderbird in here somewhere. Thunderbird that you can connect to your remote calendar, your remote contacts, and your remote email. No problem, all within that application. You know, obviously there's tons of other options for that. And if you want to install one of those options, you can come over into software and you'll see that this is just the Ubuntu Software Center. Now you'll notice that these some of these windows look a little bit different than the default windows. You know, the GTK apps um, don't have quite the rounded theme. The, the dark is a little bit different, but it's pretty uniform. You know, the, the icons on the title bar are, or the header or whatever you want to call that are pretty uniform. And it still provides a uniform feel, even though it's not exactly the same color and stuff like that. And that's one thing that I really like about this desktop environment is that it feels like it's just uh, cohesive. Regardless of what applications you're using, it feels like everything just kind of fits together. So there you go. That's my little tour of Ubuntu DDE. I've really been enjoying using this distribution. Uh, it just I love that cohesive feel. Uh, it just feels like everything belongs. It doesn't feel like it's patched together like a lot of other uh, distributions and desktop environments. I think this is a fantastic distro for people that are just getting into Linux. It's got enough settings that you can customize things a little bit, but not so many that it's completely overwhelming for the new user. If you're coming from Mac or Windows, you'll be able to find things pretty easily and pretty quickly, you know, uh, feel like you're at home with this distro. Now, some of the things I did to my other installation when I was testing this out is I did replace the file manager with Nautilus so I could get those remote previews. That's big for my workflow. I also installed the GNOME uh, calendar contacts and I installed Geary Mail. Those applications, I like having the separate applications. I use CalDAV and CardDAV for my calendar and contacts. Those handle those that really well. and those separate applications have a very modern look that fit very, very well into this desktop environment. Nothing against Thunderbird, it's a fantastic application. I just prefer having separate applications for those three tasks. Hopefully you liked this little tour. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you like this kind of video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I put a new one out. If you have any ideas for other desktop environments or other distros that you want me to test out, leave that down in the comment section below. Um, I'm happy to take suggestions on what to do next. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.